Hi everyone, it's March 8, 2018. I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this article, which is very, very important. A journalistic fix for fake news. A new venture seeks to take on the epidemic, the epidemic of fake news. This is a full-out war on the truth. It is, it's in full stride now. All of the YouTube channels that are being terminated, the purging of the truth. And if you don't see this as a purging of uh, those dissidents, those who didn't follow along with the policies, with the agenda of dictatorships, this is exactly what is taking place. It's no different from the Soviet purges, the Chinese government purges, the communist purges, the Nazi Stasi purges of those who did not go along to get along. If you're not seeing what is taking place because it looks different, because we're living now in 2018 and we lived in 2017, 2016, not back in the 1930s or the uh, 1917, because we live in the age of the internet, then you need to take a closer look. It's very, very dangerous what is taking place here. And this is so Orwellian. It is 1984 on steroids, the purging of the truth. Truth Ministries. Uh, the lie has become truth, and the truth has become a lie. Real news is fake news, and fake news is real news. So this venture now, and it's created by Stephen Brill, a media entrepreneur. Think Stephen, mainstream, okay? Mainstream and his partner is um, Gordon Krovitz, who's a former Wall Street Journal publisher and col columnist. They have created NewsGuard. NewsGuard, a reliability rating system, and they will be putting on your searches in a search engine or on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, color coding. Green is for generally trustworthy. Yellow for consistently biased or inaccurate. Red for deliberately deceptive. And those colors will be on 7,500 sources of online news. And who will be assessing these online sources, a team of journalists, mainstream media. Now, mainstream media, even those who are still demanding their right to continue on with their willful ignorance, their right to watch mainstream media and listen to lie after lie, even they know they're being lied to. They're not getting that something's very wrong with their behavior in sitting down to listen to people who lie to them. But I've spoken to those who still watch mainstream media. They know they're being lied to. They just can't change their behavior. They can't change. But they don't care about the truth. And that is what is essential. You've got to really care about the truth. And if you're not outraged and heartbroken of what is taking place here, uh, about what is taking place here, then you've got to really examine why. Because when the truth is gone, we've got nothing. Life is meaningless, meaningless. There is no point to life when you have destroyed truth. Stephen Brill, 
a veteran journalist, founder of American Lawyer, uh, Court TV, and Content Magazine. Yes, NewsGuard is his new brilliant con uh, company. And he's received six million in venture funds from who? From the likes of Publicist Group, a multinational ad agency, and the Knight Foundation, which has launched many journalism initiatives. Mainstream media journalists will be assessing online sources. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. They will be determining what is trustworthy and what is deceptive. And the nutritional labels, no, it's not going to stop at the color coding. They'll have nutritional, nutrition labels. I mean, how sick. They'll have a longer description of each site's history, journalistic track record, and ownership. Do you think that they will be attaching these nutrition labels to mainstream media, not just in the United States, but in many countries around the world, particularly Western countries, that will say the CIA owns this news source? No. The information that they will be including with their color codes would enable a reader to learn instantly that, say, a popular news site such as RT.com is a Kremlin-funded adjunct of the Russian government? Do you think that these nutrition labels will include for mainstream media all of those mainstream media news outlets? Do you think they will include that they are propaganda arms, tools of government? No. No. These people, because of their wealth and because of their power, and because so many ordinary people give them the power, they are literally turning this world into such a dark nightmare for all of us. Platform giants such as Facebook, Google, well, NewsGuard has no commitment yet from them. But don't you think that they will commit? Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter? Of course they will. Because they're all now engaged and have been engaged for years in destroying sites, calling them fake news when they're not, when they're actually reporting the truth. They, the Google algorithms have hurt so many people financially. I've spoken to subscribers who know people, one who has a son, because of what they have on their sites or their Twitter accounts or their Facebook accounts. And some have businesses on the internet because of their ideas, because of their, oh, sorry, I thought I had free speech and because of what they have on their sites, Google has managed to hurt them financially. Google has managed to destroy them. And there are so many people who don't care. And that is why we're losing Even those who don't agree with my take on what's going on, they don't agree with my opinion, they don't agree with my view, they should still stand on principle that I have the right to speak my view and my opinion. And I'm using me as an example. So when we have so many channels going down, and then, well, Richie from Boston apparently was quite lucky. And he had 57,000 subscribers right to YouTube. And he had an attorney. And he was able to get his channel back without any strikes whatsoever. Well, 
That is not the case for an awful lot of people. And there's an awful lot of people who don't have the finances to hire an attorney and clearly don't have those subscribers who will write to YouTube and demand that a channel come back. So, not sure how that took place, but it did. But it's very upsetting for all of the channels who don't get their channels back. So YouTube, I guess, got scared of Richie from Boston. Hmm. Truth unveiled 777. Channel termination. What is taking place, guys, is so incredibly Everybody should be upset. And look, I, I read a comment below my video earlier and someone said something about April 1st is the people are calling for nobody upload on YouTube. That's not going to do a thing. It's not going to do a thing. We are a small segment of YouTube. YouTube is wanting to take over uh, TV. YouTube is... You know, YouTube just wants to put out the crap so that they can keep the world's population so dumbed down and so addicted to sh look, so addicted to crap so that they live crap lives and they never challenge what the globalists, the sick psychopaths who happen to have a lot of wealth and power, they never challenge the reshaping of the world into a communist planet. And unfortunately, we do have a majority of the people of the world at a very low level of consciousness where they don't care about anything. So we were at a danger point decades ago, and now, now it, it is, well, I guess I'll say this until the fat lady sings and I'm out of here, but now it is essential for everybody to rise up and take action. And that's not going to help because we do have an awful lot who are within the quote-unquote awake community, well, they still supporting Trump, so that means that they're still kind of stuck in the matrix believing that government officials somehow are going to fix the problems. I can sit back and do nothing. We have an awful lot of Christians who believe that Jesus or God is coming back and he's going to fix everything, so they sit back and do nothing. We have an awful lot of people who are just scared and they don't work on those issues that they have. So they sit back and do nothing. And for those of you who think that I'm just this, you know, um, keyboard warrior, I will, I have no fear, none, of just walking, if it's with the truth, I have no fear of having a gun pointed at me and taking me out. And what I fear is that nobody's going to be walking with me. And that's what we need. So, listen to this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome to each of the witnesses. Um, I'd like to start by asking each of the company representatives a, a simple question, which is, do you consider your companies to be neutral public forum? 
Ms. Becker. Thank you, Senator. The mission of our company is to connect people. We do not look at ideology or politics. We want people to be able to connect and share who they are. So I'm just looking for a, a yes or no, whether you consider yourself to be a neutral public forum. We do not have any policies about political ideology that affect our platform. Ms. Downs? Yes, our goal is to design products for everyone, subject to our policies and the limitations they impose on the types of content that people may share on our products. So you're saying you do consider YouTube to be a neutral public forum? Correct. We enforce our policies in a politically neutral way. Certain things are prohibited by our community guidelines, which are spelled out and provided publicly to all of our users. No question. Ms. Mont time has expired. Ms. Downs, I, I'd like to know what what is YouTube's policy with respect to, to Prager University and the allegations that the content Prager University is putting out are being restricted and censored by YouTube? As I mentioned, we enforce our policies in a politically neutral way. In terms of the specifics of Prager University, it's the subject of ongoing litigation, so I'm not free to comment on the specifics of that case. Well, I will say the pattern of political censorship that we are seeing across the technology companies is highly concerning. And the opening question I asked you, whether you're a neutral public forum, if you are a neutral public forum, that does not allow for political editorializing and censorship. And if you're not a neutral public forum, the entire predicate for liability immunity under the CDA is claiming to be a neutral public forum. So, so you can't have it both ways. Okay. I will link below to this and you can listen to what Ashton Birdie has to say. And she talks about how YouTube is going into your subscription list and taking <laughs> unsubscribing, unsubscribing you to channels. It, that is one of the tactics that they use to censor people. Or they don't put videos in your feeds. There are so many different tactics that they use to censor the truth. But you hear these people who, and look, Ted Cruz, I'm sorry, is, what is going on here? What is going on? I did nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, you hear these people and they think that all they have to do is keep repeating the lie. We are politically neutral. We are neutral when it comes to ideology. And we all know that that is a lie. And yes, YouTube has been uh, mistakenly pulling right-wing channels. It is pulling channels that speak the truth about what is going on, whether right-wing, whether Christian, whether uh, non-denominational, it doesn't matter. The truth is what they want destroyed. And you have people like that, who, like these people, who just continually, continually lie about what they're doing. But when you just continually lie, eventually people believe the lie. They're so easily manipulated. And do you think Ted Cruz do you think, you know, a lot of people will watch this and go, oh, good for Ted Cruz. Good for Ted Cruz. He's standing up. No, he is not standing up. These congressional hearings do nothing. They are part of the show that is put on for Americans to believe that they actually have representatives in government that care about things and they're taking some action. And you can sit back and do nothing because they're on it. No, they're not on it. This is the show, the deceptive show they put on to let you think that they're on it. YouTube, Google, Facebook, government. It is not privately owned. And that has been very often so many channels have proven YouTube, Google, 
Facebook, government. And that's why nothing will ever happen because it's government that wants the truth destroyed because these people have an agenda to destroy the Constitution, to destroy Americans, to destroy this country, to bring it down to third world status so that everybody in the world is equal. It's the United Nations agenda. It's the Rothschild Rockefeller agenda. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that only means that you need to do more research to find out really what is going on. They say it was a mistake. It's a mistake? No. This is deliberate and it is the purging of truth. And it continues. So Truth Unveiled, 777 gets their channel terminated and we still have more channels. You know, you just do a search on YouTube and you will find out that there are so many channels, not just in the United States, but channels in India, in, in all parts of the world where YouTube is terminating the truth. Um, Health Ranger got his video, his channel terminated. This video I just posted and I do want to thank Zarko for posting it because I, this uh, Largan Rose, that even looks like it's, <laughs> nothing looks right to me anymore. Is that how you pr uh, spell his name? I don't know, but everybody needs to listen. Everybody needs to listen to what is being said here in this video and the video that I just posted because there are so many people who are still awake who are caught in the matrix who are believing that someone else is going to fix it you are the only one you are your leader if you're still if you're still looking at Trump as your leader and Trump's going to fix it then you're still at a low level of consciousness. You've got to do the work necessary, which, which involves that hard work of reevaluating your beliefs, reevaluating your thought, thought processes that hold you down and allow you to give over your power to another human being. You are you are the leader you've been waiting for to fix it. And I hope that you watch this video, Hate Speech. Now, Elliot Marks, I, this is a very good video. And he talks about the incredible, <laughs> it's, you know, they reduce to the lowest common denominator. They reduce to the most simplistic, you know, just a word. So, and this, the online hate index, and I will link below to this video, uh, really like what he has to say, Rams, Paul. Um, let's listen to just a few minutes of it. Google and YouTube, they have outsourced their censorship to a group called the Anti-Defamation League, the ADL. They are a radical leftist Jewish organization, and they put out a new video where they're explaining this new tool they're developing with the University of Berkeley called the Online Hate Index. Let's take a look at a little bit of the video here. <laughs> I really love the choice of their background music. It's so calming. It makes it seem less nefarious, this whole censorship thing. Yeah, I, I imagine if you're going to ship people to the gulags, if you had this music in the background, it would make everything seem okay. And instead of using an old communist, someone that looks like Trotsky, they, they put out someone that's a little bit more attractive. 
Now, I looked her up. Her name is Britton Heller. And Britton, I really do, for the most part, like your look. Uh, well, I like your suit coat. It, it's like when I'm wearing hair, it makes you look really empowered and serious. But your blonde hair, it, it's, it's a nice touch because it makes you seem like you're one of us, like the uh, American girl next door. Of course, you're the American girl next door that was involved with the Council of Foreign Relations, but hey, that just helps you be more educated. But my question for you, Britton, is when you were at the Council of Foreign Relations, did they teach you there how to be telepathic? Because you must be telepathic to be able to read people's minds and their emotions, because anything you disagree with, if, if someone has a, a political opinion that you don't like, you assign the emotion of hate to it. But how do you know really what's in their heart? It's hard enough to tell in person, but someone over the internet, you, you don't even know. Maybe they're not motivated by hate. Maybe they just happen to have a different opinion than you. For example, let's say there's some Hungarian and he wants to keep Hungary just for the Hungarians. He doesn't want a bunch of Muslims to migrate in. Not because he hates, he doesn't have hate in his heart for Muslims, he just loves his people and he wants to keep his country intact. But based on your philosophy, I, I know you would consider that hate, which is strange because in your ethnic country, uh, if someone wants to have keep out the Muslims, uh, you wouldn't call that hate. So I don't know how you can tell the difference. To me, to me, and maybe I'm cynical, is you, you're using this term hate as a weapon to try to silence people that you disagree with. And I don't see how that's an American value, right? It, it let people speak, and if people don't like it, they can turn off the video, they don't have to listen to it, but they can make up their own, own minds. But what I see you're doing here with your hate index is that you and your organization, which doesn't represent most of America, because most of Americans are still Christian, uh, and even most Jews don't belong to your organization or, or real left-wing Marxists like your organization, but you, you think that you can determine what millions of Americans are allowed to see. Now, in my mind, and I'm not as smart as you and I don't have all your education, but in my mind, to me, you have the hateful attitude. Then she continues explaining these trigger or red flag words that they're gonna look for in social media. All right, let me blow this up so you can understand what the ADL is trying to do here with their team of computer experts, what they're doing is developing algorithms that if you use words that they consider potentially naughty, they're going to raise a red flag to see if you should be censored. And it's interesting, the words that they consider naughty. Of course, there's the big one, Jew, black, white, hate. But also notice if you say nation or culture or country, they consider those potentially associated with hate. Or if you say the word problem or race, it, this is, Pure 1984, they wanted to try to eliminate words. All right, maybe not pure 1984, it's 1984 crossed with Animal Farm because some piggies tend to be a little bit more equal or kosher than others, as we see here. And this is from Britain's Twitter. White House nixed Holocaust statement naming Jews. Britain, you use the J word, it's gonna be flagged. Oh, but it's okay if you use the word. Because you see, when she says the word Jew, she has love in her heart. Whereas if like you should say it, it's probably hate. And, and likewise, if you should say the word country or you're opposed to immigration for, let's say, Hungary or Poland, it means you are full of hate. But if it's for Israel, well, she doesn't seem to have a problem with Israel because she actually was speaking in Israel. Yeah, the state that is ethnically Jewish, in fact, they're committed, and the United States is committed to keeping Israel ethnically Jewish, and she attended a conference in this nationalist state. And Breton, in case you're wondering about me, I'm sure you have these telepathic insights, but I, I really don't hate you but I hate everything you stand for, trying to silence speech online. It, it's against the principles of our nation. And, and here is a hate word for you, and I mean this sincerely, fuck off. <laughs> fuck you guys. All right, so, um, yeah, it is the weaponization of words, of information. Interesting that she works to keep Israel a nationalistic country and it's only for Jews, and yet 
here she is talking about, oh, well, we've got to. You're hateful if you want to keep your own culture and you want to keep your country for uh, your country for those who who are born to and citizens of. Now our country, the United States, we are a country of immigrants, but we're not a country of illegal immigrants. We were supposed to be a country ruled by law. And we see even government officials who are breaking the law. Those government officials who declare their their districts or their entire state, like Jerry Brown has, as a sanctuary for those who come into the country illegally. It's a sanctuary. This is a safe place for you. So they're breaking the law. What happens when you break the law? Well, you get arrested, right? No, not if you're a government official and you are working for those, you're a puppet of those who are behind the curtain and you're working to achieve an end of those behind the curtain, then you don't get arrested. Now, if we break the law, we get arrested. That is what our country has become. You talk about hate. You know, I, I don't hear, and, and this is what this guy talks about. He doesn't hear any hate. There's no, there's no hate, but they want they want people to believe that there's so much hate in the world and we've got to get rid of it. But these, this woman right here is the one who is so hate-filled. But everything is turned upside down now. Those who, who stand and live by the principles that they espouse, that they speak, have love for something greater than themselves. But they're considered hateful today. Wrong think, wrong think. This is 1984 on steroids, very dangerous. And these people need to be put in their place. Everybody who lies needs to be put in their place. Everybody who doesn't care about trust and truth need to be put in their place today, today, right now. Somehow we need to make ourselves a force and unite, unite based on principle. And the highest principle is truth and that is for everyone whether Christian or not whether Jew or not whether Gentile or not whether atheist or not truth is the most important principle that everybody could unite on unite on and and stand up for it and lies need to be destroyed so you know, and I apologize for that. Um, we, you can't permit it. You cannot permit, permit lies anymore. Those who are still watching mainstream media, so many people know that they're lying, these reporters. And those in your life who just continue living a lie, accepting the lies, they need to be put in their place. They need to know that they are contributing to the evil that is, unfortunately, it has parked a very, very dark cloud over our existence, over life itself. And it is destroying all good. And this woman is part of the destruction. I don't care, you know, how educated she is. I don't care that she's a member of the Council of Foreign Relations. So many people go, oh, wow, you, 
you you are so educated and you've got all of these degrees and you come from prestigious universities and and you're on the council of foreign relations well you must be somebody who's on the inside and you know the truth about what's going on in the world no council of foreign relations do the research on that council because that council and the members of that council are reshaping the world and we've got a lot of mainstream media journalists who are members of the council of foreign relations they put out the deception they put out the lies and they put out the hate and they get people to fight one another stop fighting one another and look to see who the real enemy is stop getting manipulated by what is taking place yes I'm serious. Crucify me for taking life seriously and taking truth seriously. But I will say this, if you are not doing something to try to, to try to keep truth alive, if you are not confronting those who lie then you are part of you're you're no different than this woman i'm sorry at this point at this point we need we so need a huge army that is active actively engaged in this fight and you know, it, it does seem as if people just love it when things are just reduced to the most simplest, you know, yeah, you're, uh, you're hateful if you use the word Jew or black or white or women or hate or country or culture or nation or fuck or immigrant or society. You're hateful. Race, problem, old people need. I mean, how can anybody take this seriously? But that's how dumbed down we've become. If anybody could think <laughs> that just by using those words, it means that you're hateful and you need to have your channel destroyed or you need to have your website, your news source, the anti-media needs to have a red color because, oh, they speak the truth. So that means they're deliberately deceptive. Um, Anybody who could possibly think that there's intelligence behind this, that there's wisdom behind this, and that it's not geared to destroy the truth, then they need to look at their thinking because it's not critical, it's not wise, and it is so not smart. <laughs> it's not intelligent. It is so dumbed down. I'll link below to all the videos and articles. When I see this kind of stuff, yes, these people will stop at nothing, nothing to destroy all good. And well, means to an end, doesn't matter. They'll do anything to achieve their goals. These are the people who are twisted, very sick, empty, all about themselves. These are, this is the face of evil. And you know, when I see these people and I see these pictures and I think to myself, there's so many, so many people in the world and there's so few of them and why can't we get them at this point? Because they're untouchable. They're untouchable because ordinary people support them. The good that sit around doing nothing. They allow these people to achieve their ends by destroying us and destroying the ordinary citizen who sits around doing nothing. Eventually it comes to everybody. If this is the world that you want, sit around and do nothing. If it is a world 
that you do not want to see and you really care about what's taking place, then you will feel compelled to take action. If you really care, genuinely, you will feel outraged and absolutely heartbroken that this is what has manifested today. This is not life. This certainly is not the life that we could have had. And you believe in God and Jesus? It is so not what God or Jesus ever wanted. It's the opposite. 